Well, good morning, and welcome to worship here on the sixth Sunday of Easter and our Confirmation Sunday. For those of you who are visiting today, we welcome you to Crow River Lutheran Church, and we hope you enjoy our service today. We have four confirmands today who are being confirmed, um, and all of them are ready, and I think we're ready to go for the day. Um, just note, uh, Vacation Bible School has been scheduled, so it's August 6th through the 9th. It's for all three-year-olds through sixth graders. Um, it'll be 6 to 8 p.m. At, in the evening. All children are welcome, age three-year-old to sixth grade. So our sign-up is on the website, and you can just fill out a Google form, and you will be signed up. Uh, let's see, what else? There's some other announcements in the bulletin, but I think we will skip those for today. You can read them at your leisure. All right. Let us begin worship. Please stand as you are able. Please respond in the bold print. We gather in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I cannot by my own understanding or effort believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him. He has enlightened me with his gifts. Therefore, I surely ought to thank and praise him. The opening hymn of the day today is Shine, Jesus, Shine, number 671. This is the litany. Please respond in the bold print. Jesus Christ has freed me from sin, death, and the power of the devil. In precious blood, and his innocent suffering and death. All this he has done, that I may be his own. 
that I may serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. Is most certainly true. Let us pray. O oh, Lord God, you are the holy lawgiver. You are the salvation of your people. By your spirit, renew us in your covenant of love and train us to care tenderly for all our neighbors. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And what praise today is, Lord, I lift your name on high. You may be seated. Today's today's scripture reading is Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31 through 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. A covenant that they broke through, I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them. I will write it in their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they... No longer, for, no longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. For at least for the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Word of God, word of life. Responsive psalm reading is Psalm 46. Please respond in the bold print. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. For we will not fear through the earth shall age, through the mountains shake in the heart of the sea. Through its waters roar and foam, through the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad and God. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. The nations are in an uproar. The kingdoms totter. He utters his voice. The earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord 
see what desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks, he breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still, know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Our second scripture reading is from Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 to 17. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe, it, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, and meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint, complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one, the one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. And with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual, spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God the Father through him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please Hold stand. on a second. So I don't know if we're going to sing today. Does anybody want to sing for jam? Oh. It's only one. All right. Okay. We have all these kids in jam on that photo. And so today they must all be taking their moms out for <laughs> but come on up. We'll teach you. You're making these things if you don't mind, Pastor.
So here we go. Keep it perky, though. Holy Gospel according to the book of John. Jesus said to the disciples, If you love me and you will keep my commandments, then I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you in a little while. The world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you, because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of our Lord. He did. Well, brothers and sisters in Christ, grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So our gospel lesson for today is a continuation 
of our scripture from last week. Last week's lesson started with John chapter 14, verses 1, which says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, you, there you may be also. The popular text at funerals, because as we learned last week, it's very comforting, right? Jesus tells us not to be troubled. Jesus says and tells us that there is a place for us in God's house. You see, Jesus is trying to comfort his disciples. They are struggling. They are scared. Amongst the disciples, there is chaos and confusion and concern. This scripture recounts events that took place before the resurrection, before Jesus was risen from the dead. Jesus knows something bad is going to happen the next day, and maybe the disciples had an inkling that something bad was happening as well. The disciples definitely had some concerns when Jesus announces that his hour has already come to pass from this world and that he would love them to the end. He's informing them of his impending departure. Then he follows that up by sending Judas out to betray him and then by predicting Peter's denial. If the disciples had been calm up until this point, enjoying their meal, there definitely would not be after these such events. And you can tell that the disciples are anxious because they start asking questions. Thomas asks, Lord, do, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Thomas and the others are concerned that they will not be able to find Jesus where he is going. How will they know the way? This reminds me of going to a new place that you've never been before. Something that I do almost every week. Just this past week, I had a meeting in the small town of Pennock. Pennock? I always say it wrong. Is that right? Pennock. Yep. Never been there before. First time for me to find Pennock in the local Lutheran church there as we had a gathering of rostered leaders. I think finding a new place can definitely produce some anxiety. And if you don't know all the people who will be at the event, sometimes that can produce a little bit of anxiousness as well. So think of that when you're thinking of going to a new place, of seeing new people. Maybe that is one of the things that the disciples were feeling when they were asking the questions, how will we be able to find you, Jesus? How will we know the way? Jesus was the disciples' person. He was their confidant. He was their leader for the past three years. They can't fathom being without him. They are worried that they will not know where to go or what to do. It's at this point that Jesus makes a promise to his disciples. Jesus promises them that even though he won't be with them anymore, that something just as good will be sent in his place. Now, if I were the disciples... I think I would be thinking that I don't care what it is that you are leaving me. I just want you to stay here with me forever because I know you and I trust you and I believe in you. I was thinking it's just kind of like when a teacher tells you that they're leaving the school district and you really like that teacher. And they tell you that there's going to be someone great, another great teacher coming the next year. But you don't know that teacher but you do know the current teacher, and you can't fathom learning from someone other than them. You have a relationship with them. You don't know this next teacher at all. If you think of it this way, the disciples maybe were not too excited about this thing that was coming in place of Jesus. They didn't have a relationship with the thing that was coming. They knew and loved Jesus, and they wanted him to stay. But Jesus could not stay. He had to go. He was fulfilling the plan that God had given him. In his place, Jesus promises the disciples that he would not leave them orphaned. I think that's a crucial thing that is given in our scripture for today. 
as Jocelyn read, in his place, Jesus promises the disciples that he would not leave them orphaned. Rather, Jesus promises them an advocate to take their place. And this advocate is called the Holy Spirit. Now, the Greek word for the Holy Spirit is paraclete. Deacon Brenda had a funny this week. She was talking how I should bring a pair of, like, cleats or spikes from my golf. And it's a pair of cleats. Get it? Yeah. That's Brenda for you. So a pair of cleats, the Holy Spirit, is a helper. It's an advocate. It's a counselor. The Holy Spirit is something that will walk alongside you in life to guide you, to show you the way. How appropriate that we are talking about the Holy Spirit here on Confirmation Sunday. Jesus tells the disciples that the Holy Spirit will teach them everything and also remind them of all that Jesus had taught them. It says that right in the scripture for today, that the disciples, Jesus tells the disciples that the Holy Spirit will teach them everything and also remind them of all that Jesus taught them. Jesus was most certainly leaving, but he promised that the Holy Spirit would be in his place. And I can tell you that the Holy Spirit is still with us today, guiding us, loving us, and walking alongside of us. You can't always see it, but it's there, it's with us. I feel the Holy Spirit the most when I'm praying. I believe that when you are connected to God through prayer and scripture, it is then that God will lead you through the Holy Spirit. I also think that the Holy Spirit is that voice in my head that's telling me to stop talking and to listen. Because I think it's when we stop talking and we hear others, that is when we hear their needs and we can come to them and help them in love. The Holy Spirit is that inkling in your gut that I just need to do something. It's always something is to help someone else or that someone else may be in need and maybe I should check on them. Often a person will come to mind and I've learned through ministry that as that person comes to mind, I should call them, check in with them. There might be a reason why. The Holy Spirit is the goosebumps that I get on my arms when I feel, when I see a kindergartner answering a question and telling the whole story of the Bible, that we, the Bible lesson that we learned for that day. Maybe some of the fourth, fifth, and sixth graders couldn't tell you what it was, but the kindergartner can tell you the whole story. That's the Holy Spirit coming through. Now, I don't claim to corner the market on the Holy Spirit. These are just my experiences. So I think it's one of the things that we can ask one another is, someone close to you. Find someone close to you and say, have you ever felt the Holy Spirit at work? When have you felt it? How has it been in your life? But most of all, I find it comforting knowing that God is with me each and every day. And I hope you find it comforting as well. I think that the disciples would have felt some comfort as they remembered this conversation after Jesus died on the cross. Jesus had to leave. But he didn't leave his disciples orphaned. And we, we are not orphaned either. We are accompanied each and every day by the Holy Spirit. We are accompanied by this beautiful church community. We are accompanied by our neighbor. And we are not alone. We are not orphaned. God is most certainly with us, both now and forever. Amen. We'll now sing our hymn of the day, which is 10,000 Reasons. If you've ever listened to the radio of Christian music, you will recognize the song. There is a bulletin insert if you would like to sing the notes for the music. Please stand as you are able.
You may be seated. We will now move into our rites of confirmation. And so I invite the confirmands to come forward as I say their names aloud. Jocelyn Comerford, Ian Shizniak, Mina Reed, and Natalie Mueller. The young people before you, having been instructed in the Christian faith, now desire to affirm their baptism. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for these sisters and brothers whom you have made your own by water and the word in baptism. You have called them to yourself, enlighten them with the gifts of your spirit, and nourish them in the community of faith. Uphold your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism, and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. Confirmands, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I invite the congregation to stand as we say the Apostles' Creed together. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Congregation, you may be seated. Our confirmants will now be telling us their favorite Bible verse, so you can start over there at the lectern. Hello, my name is Jocelyn Comerford. My Bible, favorite Bible verse is Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. I'm, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. My name is Natalie Mueller. My favorite Bible verse is Psalm 46, verse 5. He is within her, she will not fall. My name is Mina Reed, and my favorite Bible verse is Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. My name is Ian Sisniak. Uh, my favorite Bible verse is John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Confirmation students, you have made public confession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant that God made with you in holy baptism? to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the new good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. And people of God, do you promise to support these sisters and brothers and pray for them in their life in Christ? and we ask God to help and guide us. So I invite Ian and Mia to take a seat. And so we're now moving into the rites uh, where we lay on hands. So anybody in the families of Jocelyn and Natalie who would like to come forward to lay their hands on them, now is the time to come forward.
who do you present for affirmation of baptism? I present Jocelyn, who desires to make public affirmation of their baptism. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Jocelyn the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, empower her in her serving, give her patience in suffering, and bring her to everlasting life. Amen. Who do you present for affirmation of baptism? I present Natalie Mueller, who desires to make public affirmation of the baptism. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Natalie the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith guide her life, empower her in her serving, give her patience in suffering, and bring her to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Now invite Ford, Mina, and Ian's families uh, to lay hands on them. Who do you present for the affirmation of baptism? We present Nina Reed, who desires to make public affirmation of her baptism. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Nina the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, Empower her in her serving, give her patience in suffering, and bring her to everlasting life. Amen. And who do you present for the rites of uh, <laughs> baptism, affirmation of baptism? We present Ian Matthew, who desires to make public affirmation of their baptism. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Ian the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving, give him patience in suffering, and bring him to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I invite our confirmation students to please stand and turn around and face the congregation. Let us re rejoice with these sisters and brothers in Christ. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to the world. May the peace of Christ be with you all.
Let's share a round of applause and let's share peace with one another. You may now share peace with one another. I should put those under there, right? Yeah. up our offerings and kids you are welcome to come forward and place something in the green bucket and we will take up our offerings now Please stand as we sing. Let us pray. God of abundance, you cause streams to break forth in the desert and manna to rain from the heavens. Accept the gifts you have first given us. Unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish the world you love so dearly. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
For those of you who are visiting today, uh, we always take out our bulletin inserts and we pray the first names of those on the prayer list on the back of your bulletin inserts with the announcements. It'll come during one of the petitions of our prayers of intercession. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God, our faithful companion, you promise to never leave us and to send your spirit to guide us in wisdom and truth. Send your people into the world to serve as mirrors that reflect and magnify your love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. All the earth sings praises to you. Grant your care to the creatures, plants, and places that are suffering and equip us to respond to their song. Make us agents of restoration and refreshment for all of your beloved children. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Nurturing Lord, you sent your spirit to grant us peace. Make your presence known to those who feel abandoned or alone, and to all who are sick or grieving on this day. We lift up to you now those who are on our prayer list. Dorothy, Sue, Clara, Ben, Wade and Jordan Jacobson and Baby, Deese, Dorothy, Teresa, Calman, Jack, Arlen, Violet, Reynold, Pearl, Cindy, Janelle, Chris, Don, Gail, Richard, Richard, Janet, and all those that we now name in our hearts or aloud, having the confidence that through the power of the Holy Spirit, God knows our needs. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. O oh God, today as we honor and we thank the many types of mothers in our lives, we also would like to remember and pray for those for whom this day is not as joyful. We pray for those who have lost a child, for those who struggle with infertility. We pray for those who have chosen not to be mothers. We pray for those who may not have had a healthy relationship with their mother. And we also pray for those who have lost their mom especially those who are spending their first Mother's Day without her. Remind them, God, that your love is shown to them in many ways, through many people, and help us be messengers of that love today. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. I was trying to jump ahead there. That's not good. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
In the night in which he's betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray together with the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see the table is set, all is ready. Come and eat. You may be seated. Today we'll be communing at the rail. We will begin with our four confirmation students, followed then by the rest of the congregation. We do have gluten-free wafers, if that is something that you prefer. And there will be grape juice on the inside of the trays and wine on the outside of the trays. And all are invited to take part in the Lord's Supper today. I invite our compliments to come forward and to kneel.
the body of Christ given for you.
still need communion in the congregation. No? Please stand as you're able. Let us pray. Lord of life, in the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Now receive this blessing. People of God, you are Christ's body bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is number 574, Here I Am, Lord.
peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.